Hello and welcome to the Bee and the Rose Knitting Podcast. I am your host, Kat, and I'm coming from you for I'm coming to you like every week. Same mistake, new week. Um I'm coming to you from um my home in Southern California on this brisk winter day. Yes, it is now day. To me, anything before, like, 9 p.m. is morning. <laughs> Gotta love that grave graveyard shift. Uh, I think it has been probably about five days since I posted the episode I recorded last week. Um, things got a wee bit busy, but I have quite a bit of progress to show you guys and new things, so here I am. Um... Let's see, where should I start? Like, I really want to just jump into acquisitions, but also slow burn. (laughs) Um, So, let's see, this week has gone by super fast. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, So Sunday, I ended up not working due to a scheduling error. Um, So I just... um, Fun. I, I did a little more. Yeah, I went to my knitting group and I, um, because it Sunday was the first Sunday of the month, which was really weird to me because to me the first day of January is December 31st. That was a Sunday, but hello brain, get with the calendar. Um, and luckily for me, my, um, we have somebody in the group who is an Ashford wheel dealer, um, and my the project I've been working on has really been killing me. Um, it's just so frustrating because it keeps just snapping off and flying out of its guide, and I have, um, I'm going to show you my, um, my flyer really fast because it's empty, so I'm not disturbing anything. It's not empty because I finished. It's empty because I I was playing with something else really quickly. Um, so this is my flyer, and um, this is the the this is the vantage point you would have if you were sitting in front of the wheel. Of course, it would be quite a bit lower than right up in front of your face, but um, so it has. It's guides over here, and this is a newer uh, flyer, so they slide up and down, which is really fun, because then I don't have to, like, move the hooks. I can just move the guide. Um, so the guide has two holes that you put, that you typically thread the, the yarn through, and then it goes through this guide over here that is um, static, and then into my orifice and out to me and um what kept happening was i would thread the yarn through and then through here and go here and after a couple of revelations um it's so thin that it would just slip through um the o-ring it would just slip right through that and get caught on my bobbin and these aren't like they're pretty smooth but it's still wood so like you've got micro abrasions just from the grain um so it would catch and then it would get stuck on there and snap before i knew what, really what was happening um so i had i asked jerry what can i do about this Um, Because I spin with no tension, like I have um, Scottish tension, so you take a wire and put it over your bobbin, and that controls the speed at which the bobbin moves and how quickly the yarn is taken up onto your bobbin. Um, So I had no tension, um, because I want to get as much twist into the yarn as I can, and... um, So she was playing with it a minute, and she did the simplest thing, you guys. She angled this so it's like at a 45 degree angle um, in relation to the the bar. And then 
she took she only thread it through the first little loop here she only she didn't thread it through this one she thread it through this one only I've been working on this for like three months and that did not cross my mind that you could even do that and she said that because it's so thin um, threading it through both of them was taking it out too far um, which made it be able to come out in the first place so we're gonna try it just through the one and oh my god I can't believe I didn't think of that sorry about the close up to my noggin but I had to put that back on my wheel I'm just sitting right there um yeah okay I'll get into more why my wheel is like empty in a moment um so yes uh Sunday was that knitting group and it was quite a bit of fun um I got to talk to everybody um it's I wasn't able to go to the one in December because that was my little sister Bridget's um birthday was like a couple days before that so um me and my older sister went down to San Diego to take her out for the afternoon and I ended up not being able to go to um my gathering which is okay um I rather miss it because I'm spending time with my family than miss it because I am at work. Um, and then after that, I think um, on Thursday, yes, I'm jumping several days because nothing else interesting happened in between then and Thursday. Um, Wednesday was my day off, so I spent quite a bit of time working on the baby blanket, the dragon's pelt. Um, and then Thursday, I went to the movies. Um, I went to go see Star Wars Episode Eight. Finally, finally, my family got to see it. Like the majority of them saw it, the either on its premiere or within a couple of weeks of it coming out. And I've just like I don't have the time or the money to just go and see the movies whenever. Um, even like this Thursday, I spent a little bit more at the theater than I'd planned to be. Oh my god, my baby. I just smacked my keyboard real good. Um, because, um, I went to, I usually go to a theater over on Mission, um, that is really dirt cheap. Like, it's, it doesn't have any upgrades. Um, and they're really hidden. So they don't get a whole lot of business and they're in what's considered a bad area in town, like dangerous. Um, so it used to be that um, on the weekends their tickets were like $11 and depending on what day, like if you went on a Monday, it would be like $5 and then we get steadily more and more expensive up to $11 on Friday. Um, and I used to go there, and then they got bought by Regal, and now they're undergoing reno renovations to be bigger and better and more expensive, um, which I'm not too pleased with. Uh, but I did end up going to the Regal Theater over by the pier in Oceanside, um, and I went down there, and I found that there doesn't appear to be any more free parking in Oceanside. Um, I think they... The parking lot I usually go to was shut down and they're building a structure and I don't know if it's another parking structure or if it's more more uh, apartment buildings or what but it's gone um, the only other two lots I could find were five dollars for the whole day which is okay except that I was only planning to be there for a couple of hours um, but I went, I spent $5 on parking, and then I spent $10 on the movie ticket, and then um, I bought some candy. Um, so I really enjoyed the movie. Um, it was really, really good. Um, lots of twists and turns that I enjoyed. I don't like spoilers, so I'm not going to give any. <laughs> um, um but the, the experience at this movie theater, like, the showing was at 1 p.m. because, no, I had the day off. 
The showing was at 1 p.m. and the theater opens at like 12:30. Um, so it was me and like five, and then eventually six other people. Um, and when we, like we bought our tickets, I was the first one to go into the theater, and I took a picture of me and my empty theater, and I said, "Look, I went to the movies with all of my friends," because you know I don't really I don't have very many friends who are both my age and live near me. Um, they're either way older than me or way younger than me or they live hundreds of miles away or at least an hour away and neither of us can really drive to each other. It kind of blows. But anyways, so I sit down and I pick like the best seat in the house which is halfway up and in the middle. And I get out my crocheting because the lights, the house lights are still up and everything. And I just go on my crocheting and they're playing the ads except the screen's not on yet. And um, so everyone trickles in. And the first, the part before they start playing the trailers is like, okay, bye. And the, th and the um, screen still wasn't on. <laughs> and they turned the house lights out. Um, and I was, I just happened to be sitting right under a spotlight, which is amazing because, um, it meant I had light so I could, if, if feeling around, um, failed me, I could, um, very easily look down and see what I was doing without like pulling my phone out or leaving the theater, um, which was great. Um, but there was an older couple that was sitting in front of me kind of and they went up they left and found somebody and they turned the screen on and we saw the movie um we missed a couple of trailers which the only time i like watching trailers is before a movie in theaters so that kind of sucked but you know it was a good movie um and other than that it's just a really nice place to be so i had a good thursday and when i got home I had a box from Knit Picks, and, and, I had, hold on, whoa, there, yeah, there we go, I had a stitch marker from Knitty by Nature, which I love, it's Snoopy holding Woodstock, I love them, I bought that thing before I knew what was going down, <laughs> um, and it also, um, she included the, here, um, the light bulb safety pin that it's on also has a bowl, a dog bowl with a bone in it, which is adorable and I love it. And it's just those cute little things that keep me coming back because Melissa is just awesome. Um, so this is the part where we start acquisitions. That was the stitch marker I got from Nitty by Nature. And I also got a box of the Big Cozy. Hold on, my white balance is all kind of awesome. Mm, mm, mm. Do, 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 do. There we go. I just have to turn my white balance all the way down. Um, so this is the Big Cozy um, by Knit Picks. It is um, super bulky. If you're using a 15, a US 15, um, which is about 10 millimeters, supposed to be able to um, get two and a half stitches per inch which I believe means that one stitch is a centimeter because it's the conversion rate for, excuse me, for centimeters. Um, this is in the cobblestone heather colorway and it's for a commission. My aunt wants me to make her a big blanket um, blanket scarf um, one of those like comically big ones because that's her aesthetic. <laughs> um, so I've bought, I have seven of them right now. Uh, I'm probably going to need more, but that was $75. So um, we'll, we will see what um, I'm doing right now and we'll figure the math out on that. Um, and then today I got more DPNs. And these are um, Knitter's Pride Cubics. 
Um, they are with rosewood, and I have one set that is a 3.25 millimeter and a um, 7 millimeter, which might be wrong. I might have bought the wrong ones because. I did. I totally did buy the wrong ones. These are size 10 and I needed. Is that true? Yeah, it is. Sorry, guys. Um, I didn't mean to leave you guys with dead space. Um, but I needed a size 7 and I bought a size US 7 and I bought a 7 millimeter. Oh well, we'll see how those go. Um, because I bought the bigger ones, um, because I want to, I would like to make the fireside mitts by, um, no, the fire pit mitts. <sighs> Lots of words by Tara, um, Taylor Earl of um, Fiber for the People, or the. Um, I can't remember what her podcast is called right now, um, but she's Fiber for the People, and earlier in December, she released the Fire Pit Mitts um, pattern, and they're for worsted weight, and I bought 12, wor 12 balls of worsted weight yarn, um, Wool of the Andes, um, in the Opal Heather colorway from Knit Picks, and it just turned out to be the wrong side for what I want. Um, so instead of returning them and getting like an $18 store credit, I'm just going to use it. Um, it's $24. It's not like as much as that is, it's also not that much. So, um, and like with, I wouldn't really want a store credit with nitpicks. I don't use them often enough. Um, so rather than taking it as a loss for the six dollars I'd rather just um, use the wool and I think that's quite a bit so I think it'll be okay um, so I think that is it for acquisitions I'm gonna go in I don't have any FOs this week that's not it for acquisitions I keep forgetting about this it's sitting right next to me because I keep forgetting about this um so Amy Florence of the Stranded Die Pod, the Stranded Die Works, no, just the Stranded Pie Pot cast. I wonder if I'll be able to edit it out. I know it won't be. Maybe if I give it enough dead space? Let me see. So, <laughs> it'd be really funny if I just kept that in. Um, so, um, Amy Florence of the Stranded podcast and also the dyer behind Stranded Dye Works did a giveaway um, last fall for um, called the Festive Sock Knit Along where um, you knit Christmas socks. Festive Sock Along. Festive Sock Knit Along. Both work. Um, you knit Christmas socks. Um, and you had from October 1st to, hmm, October 15th, some amount of time, um, to just knit up Christmas socks. And I knit two pairs up. I knit up, um, my Christmas lights sock, which was, um, just the vanilla socks. It's like my second pair. Um, uh, and it was by, I used, um, Sunny Sock by Stay Classy Yarns in the Treasure, in the Treasure colorway. I'm so sorry, you guys. I don't have it. I did not have this part prepared. Um, I'll definitely put it in my show notes, probably, maybe. So I, I've showed it in past episodes multiple times. Um... And I also did um, the evergreen sock pattern uh, for my little sister, and I entered both of them, separate posts. I don't know which post 
was the winning post, but I did have a winning post. I was one of six winners. And I got this bag from Miss Us Creations. Um, she's UK based and it came with a matching needle cozy. It has a nice strap and it is flat bottom, which is nice. And it has a nice kind of neutral um, inside. I, this is a pretty good like two skein um, project bag um, and I really like it. Um, the only thing that I kind of wish it had that it doesn't is I wish that the uh, zipper wasn't all the way interfaced like that. Um, my Whimsy Stitches project bag has like a little gap between where the zipper ends and where the fabric ends and it's like just enough for my yarn to poke through so like if I'm if I pull out my project like and leave the yarn in the bag and close the bag then it won't catch on the yarn at all whereas this like I can do that but then it might catch on the zipper um but this has a nice grip holy bit so I can do that. I kept my sister's hat in this, which isn't my sister's hat, it's just a hat, um, while I was, the few hours it took me to do that. So that is my last bit of acquisition. I'm really happy to have this. I'm really, I'm so happy. Oh my god, this fall was a really good month for me in terms of, like, um, giveaways and winning them. I won, like, three. Like, welcome to the community. Here's three giveaways that you're going to win. Awesome. Um, so that brings us to my whips. I have this whip, which is getting pretty good. I've been working on this thing for years. Um, it is my dragon pellet. Dragon pelt blanket. It is 40 inches across, and I've not measured how long it is. But it, if I'm sitting down, no, even if I'm standing, um, it goes from the top of my torso to mid thigh, so it's fairly, it's really long, but it's not even yet. It's still a weird wider than it is long, which just tells you how short my torso is. <laughs> um, uh, but I have so this is where I am at right now. Um, I'm in. The middle of a crack of a scale creation row, and um, this stitch marker is where it was when I pulled it out of the bin, and this is about how tall it is. Um, I'd say each scale represents about an inch, so I have one. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inches on here, maybe, possibly about there. Um, but it's making pretty good progress. Um, I managed to get a row of of a full row of crocodile stitch and most of a row of um foundation stitch. Um on the blanket during the movie, which was super duper awesome, um, because I could just kind of feel, I knew, um, double crochets, it's really easy to count them without looking, or without being able to see, so, uh, it was fairly easy going, and I'm really hoping to get this done, um, but I do have to work on my commission, because I got paid for it, um, this is my commission, this is a blanket scarf, or it will be. Not like the pattern you can find on Ravelry by the same name. This is just garter stitch, and I'm holding the big cozy. I'm holding it double because I'm going to be real honest. Super, super bulky to me is um, a misnomer. It's the wrong name. This isn't that bulky. Like, yeah, it's a lot in comparison to, like, fingering weight. Actually, no, it's not. It's a lot in comparison to, like, 
lace weight, in my opinion. It's just not that thick. If you're going to name something super bulky, I I should have to use like my 25 millimeter needles, not my 5.5 millimeter needle. Which is what this is on right now, I think. I think it's on my 10 and a half. Yeah, it's not 5.5, it's 6.5. It's a millimeter off. So this is on my 6.5 millimeter needles. It's being held double. Um, I showed a picture of the stitch count of the stitch to my aunt and she likes it so we're good there um, it's a really thick fabric because um, they want you to use 15 us size 15s and I'm like 10 sizes down from that um, so I did find um, so far, I, I'm working with two skines right now, and I found one guard hair, which I, I'd say is pretty good. Um, this is 45% Highland wool, 45% uh, alpaca. So the chances of guard hair is, is, is it exists. Um, but this is, it feels really nice. You're totally going to get alpaca in your mouth forever and always. Um, yeah but it's quite a bit i've got like a little over three inches down on it and it's um 14 inches wide my cast on it was 24 inches wide but things move when you knit um they change size so that is those are both my whips i don't have any fo's this week because i'm working on two massive projects so I'm probably gonna do a gauge swatch with the worsted um, to see if it's gonna be too loose of a fabric with the seven point the seven millimeter needles um, if so that I'll keep I can do that with the needles I'm using here. No, I, I do have a set of 10 millimeter needles. I'll just use those and um, see what kind of gauge I get. And if I'm not happy with that, then I'll return the, D the DPNs um, for the correct size. Um, Greg and Nancy are really cool about that kind of stuff. Um, so I think hopefully I kind of want to do something like the problem with doing two really big projects at the same time is like I know I know I'm going to finish these projects and be really happy with them but it's gonna take a while and I'm not very patient so I want to like do the whole reason I started um the blanket scarf right now is because like I really need to take a break from crocheting for half a second and um get progress on something else but I think it would be nice if I were to able was able to do the um, fire pit mitt quickly and like have something just like give myself a little present for my patience um, but so I'm doing the reason I pulled the dragon pelt out of deep stash if you weren't here for last week is because um, Christy Lael of a Relatively Crafty podcast um, is doing the winter warm-up where she encourages you to, excuse me, where she encourages you to finish a blanket that has been languishing. And um, the other things you can do if you don't have a blanket um, that is either languishing or that you plan on knitting um, is you can um, knit up a project that is, um, I think she said DK weight or, or bigger. It might be, let me check real fast. Um, hold on. Oh my goodness. Dead space, dead space, dead space, dead space, dead space. Okay. Itchy nose, all the alpaca. 
A ver. Ba, 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 ba. Worsted weight or heavier. So I do have worsted weight yarn, obviously, because I bought 12 kinds of it. Oh my gosh. So um, the mitts will totally qualify under that. So then I'll have three projects going for this cow. Um, because the um, the big scarf, uh, the blanket scarf is in um, super bulky. So I've got one that is a sport or DK. Um, let me go look something else up real fast. Just real fast. Line. But excuse me. information um so yes I have the big cozy which is super bulky I have um the I have um the wool of the Andes which is worsted and then this is not no that's the color <laughs> sorry Where's the information? Worsted. And then I have the um, Lion Brand Heartland, which is a worsted weight as well. So all three of them qualify. Uh, one of them is an old whip blanket, and the other, which is also worsted, bonus, burns really small. Why is it like when people say worsted, I'm like, oh my god, that must be big. But like, I feel like. I don't feel like this is any different from fingering. Like, it seems thinner to me than, like, fingering weight. It's really weird. I am going to have to pick up more Heartland, though, because um, I already finished. I'm down to, like, I think I have one more ball of it in my stash, and that is not going to cover up the rest of the blanket. But yeah, worsted seems really thin, and I don't understand why. Um, so yes, future knitting, fire pit mitts. Um, also, I am doing the campaign, the 31 days and 31, no, 31 hats and 31 days for the month of March. I have met my goal. I'm so happy. Um, somebody donated um, like $20 during the first week, um, and then I, um, then I counted my tip jar, because I keep a tip jar, um, that pretty much carries, like, all of my loose change, or loose cash, or whatever, um, I just throw it in this jar at the end of the night, and I've got one for pennies, and one for silvers, and I count it at the end of the year, or I bust into it if I need a few quarters for meals, um, because sometimes we get there. Um, and so, yeah, I counted it, and I had everything else that I needed. It was awesome. Um, it was really amazing to just be like, yeah, that's all. That 20 bucks was all you needed. You're good. And um, I was in, un no, I was in Common Threads today buying my needles, and I was checking out their, um, their selection of Pima Cotton, and they have, um, Baraco yarn, it's in Pima Cotton, and it is in, they have, like, two shades of purple and a few other colors, and, um, it is comparable to what I was going to buy online, um, it's, like, ten fifty for a hundred grams, whereas I was going to spend five dollars for um for 50 grams or just under 50 grams um so I can probably get like four it's the same amount of money but it's going to a local business instead of an online shop which is cool I, I like it um so I'm just I'm so excited you guys March is gonna be here but hopefully 
not so soon that I'm in the middle of trying to finish my projects and realize I can't make my deadline um, for the, the knitting cow, which is kind of okay because Christy Lay um, always has um, giveaways for her chatter threads. Um, so even if I don't reach my goals by March, I'll, I might, I'm still in the running for something. Um, so I'm not totally disheartened, but I do really want to get this project done. It's been not quite three years, but probably two and a half and it's time. It's just time. So I think that's all I have this week. Um, I don't know what my days are going to be like in the coming week in the coming weeks so i may or may not see you guys next week but if i don't see you guys next week i'll definitely see you guys the week after that and i hope you guys have a wonderful crafty time thank you